Hey guys, Marmalade here again with Marmalade Outdoors. How's everybody doing? I hope well. Well, this is part two of seven tips for older hikers. This is a new series I started called Backpacking and Hiking for and Tips for Older Hikers. So this is part two and there's seven tips. So uh, before we get started, make sure you subscribe and like. Hit that notification bell if you want to uh, see all the content that's coming up in the future on my channel. It would be greatly appreciated. It helps me out a lot. And guess what? It's all free. All right, number one is training. If you're planning on doing a longer hike, or even if you're gonna do a weekend trip, uh, if it's gonna be a tough hike, you might think about training. It's very wise, but especially for longer hikes or through hikes. There's so many people, and I only know the PCT by heart. A lot of people uh, will watch videos and go see the movie Wild and romanticize about their PCT. They may live somewhere where they can't uh, recreate elevation, and steep mountains, things like that, but they just romanticize it, buy some gear, and they show up. And it's not what you need to do. Trust me on this. I always think about people that through hike. Why would you invest the time and the money and and stop your life to go do a through hike and not do your due diligence and do the best you can to be successful? A lot of people say, "Well, you know, I'm just going to hike my way into shape when I get on trail." Does this happen? Yes, but it's very rare. And in my opinion. I don't have any actual stats, but I bet you only one or two out of 10 that don't do any training actually get very far, forget even finishing. Uh, so do your training, uh, even if it has to be Stairmaster at the gym because you don't have any mountains where you live. Uh, do what you have to do. The biggest component with long distance hiking that people don't even aren't aware of if they've never done it, it's not the physical. It is the physical, but as you go, it's more mental. And there's no shortcuts to that. So what happens is when you don't train, you just show up, right? You're not used to this giant, ginormous mountain climb you have, or like where I am right now, it's 90 degrees, or you're running low on water, or you have to carry six liters of water, that's 2.2 pounds per liter. All that stuff that you have never dealt with mentally and emotionally. And so a lot of people quit mostly because they can't, they don't want to deal with it mentally anymore. Their body's tired, yeah, but you know, we all know our bodies are amazing. There's people that do incredible things physically. You can do whatever you want and do a hike if you have the mental fortitude. So when you train, it, yes, it's for the physical because as you get older, you're gonna feel it more. Like when I hiked the PCT, I hiked with a 20 and 21 year old uh, right from the start and did most of the desert off and on with them. Well, they started doing giant miles. They're both lean and in good shape, but uh, one of them started getting hip problems and knee problems. One had Achilles problem because it's not because they're not in shape. It's because your body's not used to that wear and tear over and over and over. So make sure you train. All right, number two kind of goes hand in hand with one when, when you train and you're getting in shape. Also start learning and pay attention to the miles per hour you average. Um, I generally, on average, hike about two and a half to three miles an hour. I can go faster, I go slower, depends on the terrain, how I'm feeling, all that stuff. But you need to learn that, especially for through hiking. Uh, because how this matters is if you're a slower hiker, let's say you can only average 10 miles a day on a through hike and you have to go 50 miles. That means you have to carry five days of food. So you have a lot more weight where some other person that can do 25 miles a day is there in two days. Also, you're getting to each water source quicker. I'll give you an example, like I, I drink not when it's hot or cold, just on a normal day, I go about four to five miles per liter. So if I'm at a water source and I know it's 10 more miles um, to the water source, I need about two, uh, two, two and a half uh, liters of water where somebody who t takes all day to hike 10 miles might need four or five liters just to make it all day. So it's very important. Helps you uh, plan your hikes, you know, especially it doesn't matter if it's a through hike or a weekend hike, you need to plan uh, comfortably what you can uh, cover in you know, uh, per, per miles per hour. All right, number three is taking more breaks. Uh, some people, there's different ways to do this. I suggest one of the problems that people who don't cover a lot of miles on a longer hike have is they take too many really long breaks. Um, and, you know, you only have so many uh, hours of daylight. So, my style is I get up really early on trail. I also, morning is my favorite time on trail. It's cool, the birds are singing, the bugs generally are not out yet stinging you. So I like morning and it, I feel accomplished when I get five or six miles in 
you know, by nine or eight, you know, I, I feel good about that. And it gives me more time to rest later. But as you take breaks, take breaks more often. Make sure you're intaking, intaking some, uh, some calories, water, electrolytes, very important. Um, and just that, especially electrolytes too, whether it's hot or humid and you're sweating a lot or not, but take more breaks. What I suggest is uh, taking more breaks, but just make them quicker. You know, even if you just rest your body for 10 minutes, put a bar, eat a cliff bar and then keep going. So yeah, take more breaks, but a little bit shorter. Number four could be your best friend out there, especially when you're an older hiker. What is that? Well, because of the nature of backpacking in general, whether it's a long weekend or a through hike, uh, something we call vitamin I will be your best friend. What is that? Ibuprofen. So some people have maybe a resistance to it. It's, you know, they have a, it irritates their stomach, whatever. But I think for most people they can take it, but it really takes the edge off. And I'm telling you, I've had times early on in my backpacking career, if that's what you call it, uh, I've had days when I was I was so sore and aching that uh, the time my legs were aching so much when I laid down, my legs, almost like I had restless leg syndrome, you know, my legs were just hurting so bad I couldn't go to sleep. I took a couple of ibuprofen, it got rid of the pain, which let me go to sleep. So just do that. Also, I would suggest if you're in hot and humid areas like the East Coast or like the desert near where I live in San Diego, uh, take salt, salt pills. You can get them. Uh, I have some that are salt and caffeine, a mix. It's not a high amount of caffeine. It's a little bit, but it has salt. I got a, uh, a bottle of them from REI. I think there's a hundred in there. So depending on the weather and things like that, uh, maybe you can order them online anywhere, but you can get some salt pills. That helps too. And as I mentioned in the, uh, the number before this, also electrolytes, very important. All right, so number five is for older hikers, but it's really for any kind of hikers is soreness so you might consider uh on some of the hikes i bought a massage small cork ball it doesn't weigh it's like a little bigger than a golf ball it doesn't weigh much i bring in a lot of my trips it's a great way to roll at your feet you can rub out some muscles if you have a hiking partner they can rub places like say your back's hurting things like that uh if you don't have that or don't want to bring it or get one you can use your hiking poles you can grab like each side of them and take them and rub like along some of your muscles and your feet and you can rub out some of that so think about doing that also maybe learn if you have some problem areas on your body that get sore a lot or whatever you might have a lower back issue uh, maybe learn some stretches things like that you can do before you get on trail and right after in the tent things like that so definitely plan that ahead of time so you can kind of rest and recover and be ready for the next day all right, for number six, there's a saying that we use on trail, listen to your body, especially as you get older, because as you get in better hiking shape, or if you're a kind of a tough guy and you don't want to listen to your body, keep pushing, you can hike yourself right into injuries or permanent injuries that get you off trail. So listen to your body. It kind of counteracts something I said earlier about knowing how many miles per hour and how fast you hike. You need to know that, but... You can plan a 20 mile day and maybe that's a huge day for you normally and you're going for it but man if you get to 14 and uh your body something about you is screaming saying please stop you know and maybe your knees hurting i don't know something like that listen to your body and stop it's not worth it uh you know i know if you were to stop let's say you have a three-day trip plan and you stop short a few days now you've either got to do a third day a big huge day or you're going to be uh shorter day of food well you can kind of lean out your food to make it last but even if you ran out of food you're not going to die but you would hate to keep pushing yourself and what happens too sometimes when you're uh, tired and you're pushing yourself uh, you get hurt you trip uh, you could twist your knee really bad or blow your knee out things like that and uh, so that's what happens i know that for me when I started getting tired at the end of the day, I start dragging my feet. I start tripping on rocks that aren't even really hardly sticking up on the trail. But that's what I do. That's a sign for me to say, hey, I want to shut this down soon. So, yeah, just give that a give that a thank. All right, the seventh and final one for part two is get a physical. Get checked out by a doctor. As an older hiker, we might have some older existing injuries. Maybe something that you must have healed from. Like a, maybe you've recovered from a, a knee surgery, something like that. 
But when you're through hiking specifically, you know, the amount of wear and tear you put on your body and the extremeness of the trail and the texture of the trail, things like that, uh, it can bring back old injuries or create new ones. So it's really important, you know, have your heart checked out and a physical, all that. Uh, it's just important to get the okay from a doctor that you're looking good. Obviously, it doesn't guarantee you're not going to get injured, but it's a good thing to at least get a fresh go at the start. And I think it'll clear your mind. And if you do have some issues, like let's say it is a knee, maybe you buy a good knee brace, things like that. You may not wear it till you need it or just wear it the whole time to save it. Uh, on trail, I see a ton of knee braces. So that's the thing. And don't let your ego get in the way. So yeah, get checked out. All right, guys, that's all seven of part two. I hope you enjoyed both those videos. I hope you watched them both. So that's 14 tips for older hikers. I hope that helped a lot. And as I said on the first video, please subscribe and like. Hit the notification bell to the upper right if uh, you want to be notified when there's more content. If you would uh, like to support me, I'm getting back on the PCT later this year to keep my quest to finish the trail. I'm going to do a very large chunk this year. I'm going to make a video to announce that. So if you want to see that video, uh, hit the notification bell and subscribe. And as a way to excuse me, support me down below in the description box. No, uh, no pressure there. If you want to, do it. If not, no worries. And I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, we'll see you down the trail.